The man that has his symptoms explained will appreciate the cure. And if I go up and say, Stephen, you know, you've got Gronenson's disease. Well, first of all, if I just walk up and say, hey, it's all right, buddy. I sold everything I got, my boat, my car, my truck, my motorcycle, put a lien on my house, and I got all that money to give you, to give you this cure for Gronenson's disease. You're going to look at me and go, what? Oh, okay, thank you. You know, it's, it's going to be senseless. But if I come up there and say, look, buddy, you got Gronenson's disease. You're going to be dead in about two weeks. I can see ten clear symptoms on your body. And I, and I bring out charts and I bring out x-rays and I, and I bring out all this. And for ten minutes, I elaborate on Gronenson's disease and I show you your disease. And then I say, look, I got the cure right here. I sold everything. You will appreciate the cure. Okay? The man who has had his symptoms explained is the one whose heart is prepared to receive the cure. The man who is ignorant won't appreciate the cure. All right? Hallelujah. <coughs> now, I read an article. <coughs> excuse me. I read an article called Getting the Monkey Off Your Back. <laughs> now, I'm not going to name any names. To, the, to it, but it's a, it's a very popular article. It's a very popular author. And, and this, this author, he bravely confessed that he never witnessed to a strange... He's, he's been a Christian for 30 some odd years and he never witnessed to a stranger. And he bravely said, I'm a chicken. Then he said, which came first? He said, my mom was a chicken too. When she was in the hospital in the last days of her life after a long battle of breast cancer, I visited her in her, I visited her, in her room. Late one night, it was quiet except for the oxygen flowing from the tube. I was bent over her bed holding her hand when I saw a silent tear flow down her cheek. I whispered, hey, what's the matter? What are those tears for? I've never talked to anyone about their soul, she said, with a touch of shame. There was my mom, a selfless, godly little old lady, not knowing if she would make it through the night, worrying <coughs> that she had failed in evangelism. She was fighting the monkey on her back. Then this author of the article that had this, this author of the article said that he had heard of preachers talking about witnessing the people on planes. And he said they seemed to imply that we could all do that. And that left him with what he called a monkey on his back. <clears throat> he said, well, maybe you can do that, but I'll bet that you won't. Even more, I'll bet that the guy, that the guy would be better off if you don't. Now, why would an unsaved person be better off if we don't witness to him? And he said it's because of this fact, and it's very interesting. Quote, they have no felt need for God. They thrive on self-sufficiency. They don't need God, and they don't have time to think about it. And he maintained that they won't listen until, quote, there is a disruption such as an illness, unemployment, a failing marriage, a child in crisis, or a serious accident. This is where the tragedy of modern evangelism is. It lies. It says because of the message that it preaches that, that uh, Jesus give, will give you long-lasting peace and happiness and, 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 and your life is going to be great. And you know what I'm saying? And, and they'll, he said, unless this happens... He said, hold on and don't say anything and don't, be, don't give them the message that Jesus will give true and lasting happiness and peace until there's a tragedy in life in the people that are around you. Then they'll be open to listen. When I used to preach a man-centered gospel after my pastor told me not to use the law like that when the, when the Holy Ghost showed me how to do it, when I, when I learned how to do it, and I was, you know, I'm thinking, man, I've got this great joy, and I did. I had joy unspeakable because my name was written in heaven, you know. And I got to looking at my friends, my lost friends, my buddies, and they're partying and having a good time and smiling. I'm thinking, 
And look at them having a good time. Why put sugar in their gas tank and bring them to Jesus? You know? That's about what that adds up to. You know what I mean? They haven't got true and lasting happiness like I have. You know, the minute their car blows up, I'll bring them to Christ, you know. And that, that, that is a perversion of the real... The, the gospel isn't for unhappy people with tragedies. The gospel is for everybody. Now, try preaching the love of Jesus, though, to somebody that has a tragedy like that. Give them, well, if Jesus loved me, then why is this terrible thing happening? You know what I mean? That the love of Jesus mentality won't even work with that. So you, you got two failing little, weak little methods, you know? Normally, people that do that, they... Okay. That's the logical conclusion to the love of Christ and happiness gospel. While my neighbors seem happy, and I found true happiness, and they're enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season, the sooner their car blows up, the better, so I can witness to them. That makes no sense. It's a perversion of the intent of the true gospel. The disruption theory and the, the basic, we're going to touch on, on all of them. But, you know, think about the man at Exxon. If y'all remember the man at Exxon, God told me to witness to him. And I put it off, you know. He, he wasn't having a disruption. And I, maybe I didn't witness to him partially because of what my, the instruction of my pastor of that time. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I, uh, I went to a man's house one time and I, was, and I was witnessing to the man and the wife was in there clicking on channels and she come in there and cussed me out and said shut up and get out of my house bring your Bible with you I don't want to hear none of that garbage all my life my parents shoved that stuff down my throat and I'm doing fine I got a Corvette and a, my husband got this you know all this great stuff going on and, and I, my life is good I don't need none of that Jesus stuff. You get out of my house and never come back. And it wasn't two weeks. It was about ten days. She went head on with a Mack truck. And she's burning in hell right now. Mm -hmm. what, happens if the, what happens if the person dies when you have a, before they have their disruption? What happens if their disruption is their death? And they, and they crash into hell. The disruption theory is, has about as much credibility as the theory of evolution. It creates a monkey on the back and a chicken in the heart, and it evolves as a, as a direct result of leaving behind proven methods revealed in the Scripture. All right? Think of a man. He's on a, he's on a boat. <clears throat> he's going downstream. It's River Niagara. On the horizon of that river... There's a 200-foot drop on the jagged rocks. You see him, and you know what river he's on. You've been down there. And, and you go to him, and you try to, and you throw him a rope, and it goes across the bow of the boat. But he just looks at the rope, and he, he keeps on paddling, ignoring the rope, and he just looks at you with a crazy look. All he's got to do is grab the rope, and you can pull him to the safety of the shore. Don't you think you should tell him about the drop? that he's heading for, you know? He's rowing and rowing. He's, he's, he's losing the battle and he's going faster. The rope's right there. All he's got to do is grab it, you know? Or should we just pray that his paddle breaks, you know? Hmm. No, no. The author of that book said, don't warn him, you know? Don't warn him. Just, just pray that his paddle breaks. It makes no sense. Just keep your mouth shut. Don't warn that those people say. When the scriptures say the exact opposite, we're told to warn the lost. Be instant, in season and out of season. 2 Timothy 4.2 Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Woe unto me, Paul said, if I preach not the gospel. Pray for me that my mouth may be open and I may speak boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel. Ephesians 6.19 Listen to what God said to Ezekiel. This is God speaking right here. All of these words is what God was speaking in Ezekiel 3, 17 through 19. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word of my mouth and give them the love of Jesus. No. What? No. Hear the word at my mouth and give them warning. Now, this is God speaking here. Give them warning from me. 
When I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him no, no warning, 